Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and in this video I just want to talk a little bit about uh, preparing and planning for a roofing project that you might have coming up. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to figure out how many bundles of shingles you need, what other materials you might need, and uh, you know even some of the tools that you're going to need. We're kind of shooting this out of order, it was a bit of an afterthought. We've uh, shot a bunch of roofing series videos uh, for this, size, uh, this side of this roof already uh, but we got thinking that uh, you know maybe maybe we missed a step and that we should talk a little bit about uh, planning so so here we are so I guess first of all uh, depends a little bit on uh, the type of roof you've got whether you've got a, a hip style or cottage style roof or a gable roof such as this um, but uh, figuring out the area of the size of your roof is basically where you want to start so on a, on a simple roof like this just being a gable roof simply go up on the roof and measure out uh, both sides or however many sides there is. So this particular one was 44 by I think about 16 feet. So uh, just measure that out, get your square footage, and then from that you can uh, determine uh, how many bundles of shingles you're going to need. Now depending on the type of shingles you're using, certain shingles cover different amounts of square footage. So you'll want to basically from there figure out which shingles you want. And then once you know that, you'll know how many square feet each bundle will cover. You can easily divide that into the number of square feet of the roof area you've got. So once you've done all that math, uh, for m the most part, most shingle types, you're going to want to add 10% for waste, especially if you're doing a hip roof. Um, three tab shingles, 10% usually is enough. If you're using a laminated shingle or architectural shingle like what we did on this roof, there's actually very little waste. In fact, uh, we've got a, a pile right here up on the scaffold. That was all of our waste from this 44 by 16 side. So uh, quite honestly, there's not even three shingles worth of waste there. So there's very little waste with this type of shingle, but it's always better to plan the 10% anyways. And you can always return the shingles back to the uh, store for a credit or for a refund. Uh, just to be on the safe side, especially if your store or your supplier is any distance away. There's nothing worse than getting almost done and then realizing you're one bundle short or five shingles short or something like that. So, so always plan just a little bit extra. Um, for the most part, for most shingles, you're going to need uh, some starter strip shingles and ridge cap shingles. And uh, usually you can use just a standard three tab shingle for that. So just get the same color as whatever you're using on the rest of the roof and you'll be able to use the three tabs for the starter and the, and the ridge cap. Um, with these laminated shingles, uh, there are special caps you can get if you want a three-dimensional three -dimensional kind of look, but uh, for the most part, a, a standard three-tab shingle uh, cut the proper way, and you can see our video on how to do that. Uh, looks just as good, and it gives you that same effect. So, Okay, so that's, that's the basics on figuring out the quantities you need. Uh, other things you're going to need as far as materials, you're going to need uh, aluminum uh, drip cap or l aluminum uh, roof edging it might be called. So it's basically a piece of aluminum flashing that goes on the, the gable or sorry on the eave and the gable ends of your roof and it just helps direct uh, any moisture that might get through the shingles or under the shingles out and into the eave trough or out and away from the house. Okay so you're going to need, the, those generally come in 10 foot lengths, there's different colors. Um, when you install it, you want to overlap it about two to three inches. So, you know, make all those allowances. Uh, and uh, even with those, you know, make sure you got an extra length possibly. Just to be sure that uh, you're not going to run short. Uh, so you've got, got that flash and you're going to need different flashings for around uh, plumbing vents. Uh, maybe you've got some uh, bathroom vents or kitchen vents on the roof. And then even up top, you can see those gray plastic vents. Those are the actual roof vents. We've got other videos showing how to install all types of different vents as well. So look at your roof, see what's existing on there. You kind of will know then you know, what you need to replace there. Uh, I would recommend in, in most cases that you'll want to replace all those things and not reuse them. Um, you know, they do wear out over time. So just uh, bite the bullet and get everything new and then you know your roof's good for another 25 years or so. Um, that's that's an, another thing with your shingles. They come in in different lifespans. Uh, so you're gonna generally find, you know, 
25 to 35 year rated shingles. So it's something else to think about, uh, but as the years go up, also the cost increases. But believe me, you don't want to be re-roofing your house every 10 or 15 years if you can at all help it. So uh, my, in my opinion, it's better to get the best shingles you can and hopefully get as many years as you can out of them. Um, I, d I don't know if I've ever seen a shingle truthfully, you know, a 25 year shingle actually get 25 or more years. Um, so expect that you're going to probably going to be changing them two or three years early, uh, as long as uh, weather conditions and that don't deteriorate them too quickly. Uh, so getting back to materials, we've got, we talked about the edging, the vents. Uh, now what you don't see underneath here is the underlayment. So it's a, it's a barrier basically between the shingles and your roof sheeting. And in, in most cases, you're gonna want a, an ice and water shield or a grip guard type material on at least the first three feet of your roof. On this one, we actually went two rows, so we, we were protected about five feet. Um, so that's another product that you can see us using in the video and, and talking a little bit more about. Um, and then after that point, most shingles now require that you put some kind of roofing felt down underneath them, at least one to two layers. So again, depending on the slope of your roof, your climate, and the shingles you're using, the manufacturer will have some suggested uh, uh, items there for that as far as how much to apply. So that's your, that's your roof felt. In this case, we used two layers. We used the uh, grip guard for the two rows, and then after that, we used a double layer of 15 pound felt uh, for the rest of the entire roof. So that, uh, that looks after most of the materials. Um, Obviously, you're going to need nails and all that kind of stuff too, just depending on exactly what you're doing, whether you're using an air nail or hand nailing it all by hand. Uh, one thing that I'll really suggest you look into is most uh, shingle suppliers will uh, offer a service of obviously delivering the shingles, but not only delivering them to your home, but actually a rooftop delivery. So there's a couple different ways they can do that. Some of them will have a forklift that they'll bring, and they'll actually lift the pallet of shingles up to the edge of the roof, where you can then uh, carry them one by one or whatever off and spread them around your roof and uh, not have to carry them up a ladder. Uh, now the, the guy isn't going to set that pallet on your roof, it's way too heavy to set in one place. So you just have to be there uh, to meet them, to unload them off of his pallet. Uh, so that's one way. Another way is uh, some of them will have a conveyor system right on their truck and uh, if they can get close enough they'll just park on the street or driveway or whatever extend this boom up to your roof and uh, basically one guy will be unloading them off the truck while somebody else or a couple other guys at the top are uh, lifting them off the conveyor and spreading them around the roof ready to use. So, so I definitely recommend that you do that as opposed to carrying them up the ladder or carrying them one by one or whatever. It's, you're going to be wore out before you even get started. So, um, uh, Tool wise I talked a little bit about uh, you know if you're air nailing it you're going to need a half decent compressor and uh, air nailer which you can rent all of that stuff if you need to. Um, highly recommended, it, it's definitely going to speed the process up for you. Uh, you can hand nail it, that's fine. Uh, so you're going to need uh, nailing equipment, uh, you're going to need a hammer, you're going to need a knife, uh, probably a knife with a straight blade and as well as another knife with a hook blade for roofing. So you need that, uh, maybe a framing square and chalk line and uh, a stapler of some kind to put your underlayment down with. Uh, on top of that, you're gonna need some roofing cement. So that usually comes in a tube, like a caulking gun type tube. So you're gonna need a caulking gun to operate that part. Um, I think that pretty much covers all the basic tools you're gonna need. Uh, I would suggest that maybe you watch all our videos on roofing first and that'll really give you a, a real good idea exactly of the different things that you're gonna encounter and, and uh, techniques on roofing your roof. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, like I said, this was a little bit of an afterthought, but I think it definitely is uh, a good, I good idea for us to have given you a, a better, better insight into what you're gonna need before you even tackle the project. It's definitely, it is a DIY project, uh, but from a safety standpoint, you definitely wanna be uh, okay with heights. Um, you wanna be pretty sure sure-footed. And personally for a DIYer, I wouldn't recommend doing your own roof if it's any more than a 612 pitch, I'd hire it out. Or maybe you're a two or three story home. Even then, unless it's real flat pitch, I would probably hire it out uh, just for safety's sake. It's gonna cost you a few thousand dollars to have somebody else do it, but 
uh, you know, there's much safer things you can do yourself on the ground than climb around up on the roof. Uh, we're just doing a bungalow here. Uh, we actually set scaffold up all the way along this side, which helped us for fall protection, as well uh, it helped us out mostly in uh, shooting this video and, and uh, giving us better viewpoints. If, uh, if you are on a, a roof where the, you're going to be above 10 feet at any point, you probably will want to think about some fall arrest equipment, which consists usually of a hook bolted in at the top of the roof and a harness and lanyard system to uh, keep you from, if you do fall off the roof, uh, keep you from hitting the ground and getting hurt. Okay, so that pretty much covers everything. Uh, if you have any other questions or maybe we missed something or you didn't quite understand something, uh, just go to my forum and post, post up your question and I can answer you from there. Um, you can uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can check out our Patreon campaign if you feel that you'd like to contribute to uh, helping us out a little bit financially to keep these videos churning out and helping you guys save money. So anyways, it's Shannon from houseimprovements.com and I'm glad that you watched this and hopefully you can take something out of it.